Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you also to all of the people who help support the creation and production of this podcast with their help at patreon.com slash SW7x7. So I'm really excited to share this conversation with you. It is with a person named Jeremy Thorpe and here is Jeremy's uh, details. It says uh, that he's been a Star Wars fan since he was five years old in 1977. He waited in line overnight in the rain for tickets to The Phantom Menace in 1999. He's worked as a physicist, a writer, and a projectionist. He's now an editor at a small academic press in and living in Watertown, Massachusetts with his wife Kendra and cat Gus Gus. So the reason why Jeremy came to my attention, I follow him on Twitter, X, Zitter, whatever you want to call it, and he has been collecting over a significant period of time music from Star Wars, but not just any music. It's music that you actually actually hear within Star Wars storytelling, not the orchestral music, and I will allow the conversation to unfold so that way you get a fuller explanation of just exactly what we're talking about. But I was so impressed with what he's done that I reached out and asked if he would be interested in talking about it, and he said yes, which was awesome, and so we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, and I am excited to be able to share it with you. So we're going to dive right in. Here is the first of my two parts conversation with Jeremy Thorpe, who has done some excellent cataloging of Star Wars music. Jeremy Thorpe, welcome to Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well myself. Thank you. Um, I'm so glad that you said yes to you know, me reaching out because you've done something rather remarkable and we're going to talk about it in due time but uh we'll start off with just something that i want to ask you as a, a base question in general uh, about star wars music um from your own fandom your own history like can you think about the the first piece of star wars music that either made you sit up straight or gave you goosebumps or otherwise just you know lit your you know inspired fire absolutely uh i was five in 1977 and uh, my dad took me to see Star Wars and the entire experience sort of washed over me. Uh, and I had a record that had the Cantina band on it, the uh, Mad About Me, what, what it's now called. And it wasn't the actual uh, John Williams recording, it was some knockoff recording, but I would play <laughs> that over and over and over and over again. Um, and I would like listen, it had the sort of sounds of uh, alien, alien noises that weren't actually in the movie, but that they put in for some reason. And I would try to figure out which aliens were making those noises. And I just got really, really into it. And I would dance around as a little five-year-old. Um, and ever since then, I've just really been into Star Wars music. That is awesome. And I, you know, what you're mentioning here too, it feels like for people of a of a certain generation and age, and I'm right with you in, in that time frame as well, yeah, the movie experience is something, and I'm actually shocked to hear that you might even remember having seen it in the theater. I I don't, but it is that after experience, whether it's the action figures or the read-along records with the 45s and so forth, that's the stuff that really kind of reinforced our experience as fans, Absolutely. right? Yeah, yeah, of course, because uh, you can see it in the movie or in the movie theater, you can see it once or twice, then you're going home and you're listening to it over and over and over again in the audio format or playing with your action figures, and that's where it really starts to come alive for you. Right. And for people of our particular generation, we didn't have the streaming options. <laughs> and <laughs> even VHS then... VHS even. <laughs> yeah, pirating off of HBO was, like, I think, still a good five, six years. <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a ways away. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you mentioned the Cantina Band song, which... I I'm sorry, tell me the title again as it's uh, known it, now. It, it, it's now known as Mad About Me is the most most well-known Cantina Band song. Gotcha. Thank you. And so Mad About Me is an example of something that's referred to as diegetic music. And that word diegetic, I don't think a lot of people are familiar with that word. So mm -hmm. as opposed to orchestral music, which is what you know John Williams is obviously very known for, like the soundtrack, the score to a movie. Can you briefly explain for us what diegetic music is? Sure. Uh, diegetic is also known as source music. And it's uh, called source music because the source of the music is there in the scene. So if, you, uh, if you're watching Luke Skywalker uh, looking at the binary sunset and you hear the force theme, 
there's not a speaker behind a rock playing the horse theme. <laughs> uh, but when he walks into the cantina and he sees the band up on stage, the source of the music is there in the scene. So Luke is hearing it, we the audience are hearing it together at the same time. That's what source or diegetic music is. And sometimes it's ambiguous, like uh, the throne room, when they get the medals at the end of that movie, uh, mm. we hear this sort of martial version of the force theme uh, as they're walking up. And we don't see a band, but if you've ever watched that without the music, it's a really long, slow, awkward walk <laughs> to the front of that room. <laughs> so you have to assume something was playing uh, some some sort of music or something was happening because otherwise they are uh, just sort of coughing and shuffling their feet. Uh, so is that diegetic music? Is uh, or is it orchestral music? It's it's hard to say. It's ambiguous. It does put me in mind also of the ending of the Phantom Menace with the you know the parade in mm -hmm. um, you know on Naboo and it does seem like there are actually people in the parade who are playing instruments. And so yeah. that would have to be, I guess, one of those combinations where it's both diegetic music and orchestral music in a sense, or maybe they, you know, they layer over each other and it's, you know, a little bit of both. They do. That happens. That happens at the end of a lot of Star Wars movies where you're like the Ewoks, the Ewoks are singing. And then that sort of blends into a choir, uh, which then blends into the credits music. Um, and uh, so the, what, what you mentioned at the end of The Stand of Menace, that was John Williams himself actually gave that uh, the, the name uh, Augie's Great Municipal Band. So mm. he created a diegetic character named Augie, which doesn't exist in the movie, doesn't exist anywhere, <laughs> and <laughs> said, this is, this is Augie's uh, municipal band who's playing this music. Uh, and nobody quite knows why he did that. Uh, now it's uh, the the expanded universe made a character named I think Agara Jewel or something like that. <laughs> but at the time, people were wondering. Uh, there were the people said, "Well, is is that Palpatine's first name? Is his first name Augie?" Uh, ah. They didn't know where where that came from. Right, right, and we didn't know for a long time until yeah, recently that it was Sheev, which is Sheev. a whole <laughs> other thing. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly you know a lot about diegetic music and in fact what you have done that is so amazing is create a catalog of diegetic music in Star Wars. So what inspired you to start creating this? Well, uh I was my wife Kendra took me to Galaxy's Edge in Walt Disney World for my 50th birthday in 2022. And I was sitting outside of the restaurant there, Docking Bay 7, and I was eating my fried Endorian tip yip, or whatever it's called. <laughs> and I was hearing this uh, from, from a hidden speaker somewhere. I was hearing this weird atonal percussive music. And I was thinking to myself, uh, you know, that music is not for me to listen to. It's not for me to enjoy. It was composed for... You know the squid squid faced aliens that are around the corner that I can't quite see or something. It's it's music written for some other alien species, uh, but it's also music that's written for me to give me the sense that there's another alien species out there because there's not really an alien species. And I thought that was just so cool, mm. and I started thinking about well, how many of these tracks do they have at Galaxy's Edge? How many tracks do they have in Star Wars in general? And what are the uh, you know, the emotions that they're trying to evoke or the, the the sense of being in a place and being that's not quite Earth, it's an alien place. Um, and then I wanted to get them all together so I could listen to them and experience that it's all over again. So are you particularly musically inclined in general as well? Or is it just, you know, is it a Star Wars thing in specific? Uh, I am an amateur musician. Oh, okay. I, I, I play guitar for uh, something that's called Scottish country dancing. Mm. Uh, so jigs and reels and, and that sort of thing. Ah, okay. Uh, very, very different from most of Star Wars music. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but I've, I've, I've only ever noodled around with that. I've never, never done anything professionally with it. I gotcha. guess actually I was. Uh, one of my songs was played on the Dr. Demento show once. Ah, that's a big deal. It was a big deal. I yeah. Wrote, I, wrote, I wrote a parody of Seven Nation Army by White Stripes called Seven Bladed Razor. Um, <laughs> it was back back when the every time you bought a razor, it would have one extra blade in it until you got like five or six. 
Mm -hmm. and, and I sent it to Dr. D and he played it on the radio one time. And that, that, that's my music career right there. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, I mean, hey, that you and Weird Al Yankovic have both been played on the same right. show. So, I mean, that's pretty darn cool. <laughs> it is. And uh, Weird Al has done diegetic Star Wars music now. For the, has the he Lego, really? He did for the Lego um, uh, summer summer vacation special. Yeah. Ah, okay. Wow. <laughs> it all comes around full <laughs> circle. How uh -huh. fun. Um. So, I mean, you mentioned the Lego show, um, the Lego, you know, summer vacation thing. Um, it, it seems like whether it's animated or you know, video games, I guess, in particular, like, you know, some of this stuff seems like it would be really difficult to, you know, to track down. I mean, you know, certainly they've been very promotional with the things like Lego Star Wars Summer Vacation or the Christmas special that they did and that sort of thing. But like, I mean, some of this just seems like it's so... You know, so obscure <laughs> that, I mean, how on earth would you ever be able to track some of this stuff down? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, it takes a lot of detective work sometimes, um, <laughs> especially the, stu the stuff in video games. You know, I, I play some video games, but there are video games from the 90s that are really hard to, to find these days. Uh, what I have going for me is the fact that uh, gamers in general are very uh, thorough in their mm. fandom <laughs> so <laughs> there are uh you know web pages that just just have rips of soundtracks of uh, every video game you can think of and there's youtube playthroughs and things like that so um you know you can listen to you go through the the tracks from a video game soundtrack and you say oh that sounds like that sounds orchestral that sounds kind of like the star wars theme and then you get say ah <laughs> that that's probably like from a cantina somewhere then i'll look into that a little bit a little bit more closely ah so then you would hear that and then you would maybe look at a playthrough on youtube and see about right. you know whether there's a cantina scene and okay yeah exactly that, yep oh my goodness so this is just oh it's a heck of a lot of work and <laughs> it i mean it is absolutely amazing all right, so we're going to stop it right there and call it an episode. We'll pick up with the second half of our conversation tomorrow. And so I just want to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode. As always, you can help support this podcast if you enjoy it by leaving ratings and reviews and hitting like and subscribe and join buttons and telling other Star Wars fans you know about it. And also by supporting the show directly at patreon.com slash 7x7 if you like. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me as always. And may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 7 by 7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.